Hi everybody, Scott Frankowski here, Head West Photos, back for another video. Today I'm going to go over some pictures of birds that I took on the Lumix FZ80. Uh, this was my first camera I ever had. Um, I didn't know anything about photography getting into it. I got it just because I wanted to take pictures of birds. Um, so when I first started out with this camera, I was just fully in auto mode, just trying to get good bird pictures. It works well for birds because you get this ultra zoom on it. Um, what doesn't work well for birds is just not knowing some of the basics of photography. I set this in auto mode a lot of times. Um, I, my shutter speed was way too low or boosted up the ISO too much. Uh, sometimes that boost in the ISO actually helped me get the picture, I think. Um, so I had hundreds of pictures of birds and I chose some of what I thought were the best of them uh, to go through in this video. And I'll talk about things um, I like, things I don't like about them. Uh, to keep, the key to getting a good bird picture on the FC80 is cranking up the shutter speed. Um, I noticed when I was in auto mode, looking back at the settings on a lot of pictures that were just slightly blurry, uh, the shutter speed was way too low. You gotta really crank it up, like over 500. Um, maybe not always that high, depending on your lighting, but you gotta crank it up pretty high to get a decent picture of bird. If you zoomed out, if you zoomed all the way out to 1200 millimeters, you, you gotta crank that ISO just to control the, any shake in the camera. This The camera in body stabilization does a decent job, but you still need to just crank up that shutter speed. So that's my number one advice for getting good bird pictures on the FC80. Uh, with that said, let's take a look at some pictures of birds shot on the FC80. Uh, these photos go in chronological order from when I first started photography uh, with the FZ80 um, going up until so that was about a year and a half ago May of 2019 up until today I went out this afternoon December 12th um, year and a half later um, having a bit more photography skills I feel like now and took the FZ80 out today to try and get some bird photos so I'll show you some of my favorites and Maybe some ones that I like for some reason or another. Uh, this is one of my first shots, and it's actually, like, I like it. It's it's good looking at it now. Camera was in full auto mode. It just kind of chose the settings. Um, it was nice enough to bump up that ISO really high to 3200 for me. Um, so I could have the shutter speed at 1 800th of a second. Captured the seagull in flight nicely. I like the black and white on it. Um it's it's a cool picture sometimes you get lucky with your early shots a blue heron um a lot of noise reduction going on here so this is zoomed in at 100 eh, percent overall the scene's okay the color choices again um not so good uh the blue heron itself so this is at one eight hundredth of a second iso 80 so i should have this a lot better i think i put too much noise reduction on there um this one here is is still one of my favorite pictures i just like that i caught these two birds on the pole with the pelican kind of flapping its wings um the pelicans just like to let the breeze flow through their wings eventually they let that wind just kind of take them up one six fortieth of a second iso 80 um zoomed out pretty far uh, at about uh about a thousand millimeters in full frame equivalent mode um cool picture some seagulls just silhouetted against the clouds i liked the colors in this picture i thought it looked good so this was my first trip to um south padre island um the reason why I got my FC80 to begin with, just to try and get pictures of birds while I was there, that would be better than using a smartphone. And yeah, I think they they are better than using a smartphone. Um, not too bad. I, and I knew nothing about photography at this time. Some pelicans here at one twenty-fifth of a second. 
This is in El Paso, Texas. This is where my in-laws uh, live here. So I, I visit El Paso quite often. Um, just some pigeons on a roof. Check the focus. Not The focus is a, a smidgen off there. Um, gotta let the photo fully load. Yeah, it was, uh, it's a little bit off, but it's not terrible. Uh, the FC80, you gotta really work to get your focus right. Um, what I recommend is just shooting many shots. So rattle off 10 shots at a time. Um, I like to use for any birds, I like to use the tracking focus and I don't take a picture until I see it's locked on to the bird. A lot of times the tracking isn't so good. So I'll always aim at something near the, it, it doesn't pick out the bird as a subject a lot of times. Um, so what you try to do is get the bird in the middle of your frame, have your tracking set for the middle, um, and then half push down the shutter. And a lot, uh, when you're lucky, it locks onto the bird and then it will usually get it in focus. As long as you see that tracking box is locked onto the bird, it loses its tracking fairly quickly too, but, uh, a lot of times you can get it and then just rattle off a bunch of photos um keep your shutter speed high uh this is only one two hundredth of a second should even probably be a bit higher i'm out at the maximum 1200 millimeter equivalent here so should probably have and that might be why it looks a little out of focus probably just a little bit of camera shake there um and probably lost lost the focus made it just a bit soft uh, this is cool. Mockingbird here. Uh, the one before it too. Um, I like that I got the full tail in, in this frame. It was eating a fig, so it looks like it, it murdered another bird here or something. Um, wait for it to load. There we go. A little bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's about as good a focus as you can get from, um, the FC8. Right. It probably could be a bit better. Um, this is zoomed nearly all the way out, about 1150 millimeters full frame equivalent. So the bird was probably about 20 feet, 15, 20 feet away from me. Uh, and that allows you, even with this tiny little sensor, you can blow out the background real nice as long as the subject is close to you and you have a long focal length on it. The equivalent aperture on this camera um, this is at aperture f5.8. So the exposure remains the same, whether you're on a small sensor or a full frame sensor, the amount of light coming in is dependent on the aperture and that's going to remain the same. The amount of light coming in is going to remain the same regardless of what size sensor you're using. What does change though is your depth of field. Um, so the equivalent depth of field on a full frame camera, this would be like an f 28 or so so like a really um really small aperture equivalent on a full frame camera um but even with that high of an aperture as long as your subject is fairly close and you zoom out a lot you're gonna get the nice um bokeh you're gonna get that nice blown out background which looks pretty good it isolates the subject from the um from the background nicely. This this one is probably one of the better ones I've taken with this camera. Uh, the same mockingbird just perched on this little twig about 15, 20 feet away. And that's that's tack sharp. I'd be happy with this focus on, on any camera I'm using. Have the Franklin Mountains in El Paso here blown out in the background, but you can still see some of the contrast there in the ridges. Um, a, re a really cool photo. Here, technically, this photo isn't that great, probably, but I just love these birds. These are the monk parrots of Austin, Texas. So the story is that, I guess, um, they were kept as pets way, way many years ago, decades ago. Um, and some got out, as pet birds tend to do, I suppose. And they now there's just this whole colony, many colonies, actually, of... Um, monk parakeets all around Austin, Texas. So you can find these birds everywhere. They make these huge nests in trees. They're really friendly birds. They're really curious. 
Uh, they're really loud. I mean, they just look very happy. I would look happy too if I looked like this. They're really uh, cute, cool birds. Uh, they mimic sounds a lot. So at the crosswalks, I've I've heard before that the crosswalks they mimic the sound um, that it makes when when the um, when you're able to cross a street. So that can be very confusing if you're relying on that sound and uh, instead it's a bird uh, that's mimicking the sound instead. Could could throw you off a little bit. So this is uh, what's the date on this? If I have the date. June 20th, 2019. Okay, so this is about a month in. Uh, this photo isn't too great, though. I should have... It was getting to be pretty low light, so the ISO was up a bit, but probably not enough. And I'm at 1 40th of a second. Zoomed in at an equivalent of, oh, I don't know, around 900 millimeters or so. Not, not fast enough of a shutter speed. I'm surprised it's not extremely. You can see it's pretty blurry, though. Um, there's still some detail, but I should have had a much higher shutter speed. It would have been, um, uh, better for this picture, I'm thinking. <clears throat> now we go to July 11th, 2019. So I'd been shooting photos for a couple uh, months now. Um, yeah, a little finch or something. I'm not sure exactly what type of bird this is with the full moon. This is in Wichita Falls. Texas at the Midwestern State University campus. Um, just a cool picture. I like it. So now we're going January 8th, 2020. Um, so by now I started to feel a bit more confident taking pictures. This was a trip I took to Oceanside, California with a buddy. We just stayed at an Airbnb and hung out in Southern California for a week. Um, Cool picture. So that's the Pacific Ocean there. This is just a shot from the Airbnb. Zoomed all the way out at 215 millimeters, which is 1,200 millimeters. Uh, I, I I guess I figured out that you got to boost your shutter speed by now. So I put the shutter speed up to 3 20th, 1 3 20th of a second, which is still not fast enough for this focal length, but the in-body stabilization helps out a bit. Um, if we zoom in on this, yeah, he's, he's pretty in focus, about as, about as good as you can get from, from this camera, I'm thinking. <clears throat> One more from that trip, just a seagull, chilling on the light pole, ocean in the background, you can see the, the, the pigeon trap here where <laughs> they don't want pigeons sitting on the stuff, but uh, that seagull does not care. Says, I'm just going to sit on the light pole instead. Um, focus here. I don't know. This bird was probably, this is probably a quarter mile away or so. Um, so I don't know if I'm missing focus a bit or if there's atmospheric stuff happening at this focal length. Probably not a quarter mile, probably about uh, three, four hundred yards. That might be close to a quarter mile, I guess. But it, it was, our Airbnb was up on the uh, cliff and then this light pole's down on the beach. So it's it's a good distance to that. Okay, so those, and that one was from January 8th, 2020. Uh, haven't really shot that camera much since then. Um, so now some other photos I took are just from today. December 12th. So uh, you can see my progression here. And maybe you'll say, well, he took better pictures before. Eh, you might be right. Um, but these pictures were taken. Uh, next pictures were taken um, today, a year and a half into photography um, with the FC80. I took the FC80 out for a spin here. So um, you can see I'm at 1 800th of a second. So even now, nice bright daylight, I boosted my ISO a bit just so I could um, bring up that shutter speed to really freeze any motion here and did a pretty good job. So I notice these pictures from today are just overall much, much sharper in focus. I'm using the focusing correctly. Um, 
I think this is about as good as image quality as you're going to see on the FC-80. Compositionally, I like the shadow going through these birds. Kind of highlights this mallard here. Um, <clears throat> female duck just waddling with her partner here. And I, what I liked about this, it's not that great of a picture, but I did like the uh, photo bomb from the grackle here. Uh, kind of cool. Um just sticking is that I didn't even notice him when I was taking the shot. Uh, I'm at 74 millimeters, so that's about 350, 400 millimeters in full frame terms. Um, uh, one six fortieth of a second with ISO 1000. So again, boosting that ISO just to get the shot. So you can see the grain in there. You can see the noise introduced in there because I'm jacking up the ISO and it I mean you don't like the I'd rather have a bit noisy of a picture if it's hitting the focus um and not getting motion blur <clears throat> here's a goose hybrid of some sort that just stuck his face in the water um one eight hundredth of a second ISO 320 uh What's my focal length? 174. So I'm I'm way out there. This is about 900 millimeters, uh, full frame equivalent. So getting getting way out there, but getting the bird relatively sharp. Um, so he's looking good. So again, with that small aperture, um, or with the large depth of field created by the sensor size and the aperture, you can really get. I mean all these birds are in focus here which you don't get usually with a full frame camera unless you really stop down your aperture a lot um on the full frame camera you gotta kind of choose what you want in focus or take down your aperture a lot if you want to get a, a bunch of different things in focus so that's one benefit of the fc80 um those small sensors really allow a, a large um depth of field to get a lot of things in focus this shot's cool so this bird's uh i don't know gnawing at himself or something about to dive his head into the water <clears throat> this bird's just doing what doing what he do got, got a bunch of different birds up in this shot I just like the composition on this. I like the bird with its neck outstretched. Get that kind of broken reflection in the water. That's pretty cool. Uh, great blue heron. So you can see my great blue heron shot now. So, I mean, let me point out the obvious. This is almost photojournalistic here with the trash. Um, and, yeah, it's a, it's a storm, um, like a retention pond so things just wash into it so it's not saying that everyone throws all their trash in it uh just people throw trash on the ground in general but it washes into this storm retention pond um and then when it's real low like this usually it's up about a lot higher if we've had a lot of rain but this time of year it hasn't rained much at all um so ignoring the garbage here in the photo um just looking at that great blue heron here, ISO 100, full 1,200 millimeter zoom. Um, a lot of good detail for the FC-80. That great blue heron looks pretty good. Compare that to going back. I'm going back to my first picture of a great blue heron. So you can see... I, I learned to do some things differently, I suppose. Um, this here, this is a comparable one. This is also at, um, this is one of the first shots in South Padre when I first started a year and a half ago. Uh, a great blue heron. I think that's a heron. Maybe a crane. No, that's a heron. Um, heron uh, at 215 millimeters, so 1200 millimeters, ISO 80. Um, and compare that to this. So you can see the progress there. Just able 
to get the shot. One eight hundredth of a second. I think I was even at one eight hundredth in the last one too. Um, must be the lighting. Um, probably the focus more than anything. So this one I got focused right on it and took a bunch of shots, but they're all relatively in focus. This was just the one I picked um, to show here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess a uh, improvement in photography over the years, over the year and a half. Um, this was from way out. So I'm at a focal length of 115, but I was really far back from this. I even cropped this in a little bit just to get what I wanted in the shot. Um, seagull here, another one diving into the water. Uh, one sixteen hundredth of a, a second ISO. So I'll bump the ISO up here to 800. Um, and it's grainy. I mean, once you get into ISO 800, you get so much noise in there, but the focus is, is pretty well. And from back there, from, uh, when I zoom back out, it looks pretty cool. Just a duck ducking around. Um, one thing I don't like about the FCAD, it renders blues or it's, it's blues really suck. I try to mute out the blues. Um, I took the, uh, vibrance way down on this. Um, just cause if you can see here, if I move that vibrance up, yeah, I really don't like those blues there. They just look kind of fake. Um, so take the blues down. That's, you know, personal preference. Maybe you like those blues a lot. Uh, same bird here. I just, like, that it came into the sunlight. Um, just give it a second to load. There we go. So, yeah, what am I at here? Uh, ISO 800, one sixteen hundredth of a second, about uh, 600, 700 millimeters full frame equivalent. <clears throat> another type of duck with another a black duck here with the white beak. Um, a very metal, heavy metal kind of duck there. Um, just I like this photo. I like the colors. And I was trying for a little bit better composition. And it, really, I could have improved this photo by just coming down more to get the full reflection in the frame. That would have made a much nicer photo, I think. Um, there's always room for improvement. <clears throat> and then finally, some uh, type of goose hybrid swimming with another one. Um, so zooming in, and yeah, you can see my focus... I've improved at getting good focus over the last year and a half. And I think I've improved on just getting more interesting, better shots of birds over the last year and a half. Um, and, and the FC-80, it's, you, you got to just crank the shutter speed. Don't worry too much about your ISO. Bring it up as you need to, but make sure you get the shutter speed and make sure you're using the tracking focus on it. Uh, and make sure when you're using that, that's actually locking onto the correct thing. That's how you're going to get pretty decent bird picks with the FC-80. All right, and that's my progression from starting out as a newbie photographer a year and a half ago to the current day. Um, let me know what you think. If you think there's more room for improvement, obviously there is. Um, yeah, all right, everybody, take care.